Hey, hello, mops, moms. Uh, we're so grateful for you and everything that you're doing and learning and for your leaders. And uh, we've just been asked to share a little bit, Chantal and I, about Christmas and a little words of encouragement. And today uh, we got to Zoom with my family and I had two nephews who in the last few months had babies. And uh, so we were having kind of a Zoom baby shower with them. And I was thinking, honey, it's so different Christmas is when you have a baby and a child and you could tell just my nephews, these big, strong, strapping guys think differently about life. What was it like for you as a mom too? just thinking about Mary having a baby? How did Christmas change for you? Yeah, you know, it's a good question because I do think it, it really changes. It really changed my perspective. Um, and to, to be a mom at, at Christmas. And, and we brought both of our first two girls. Um, we spent uh, time in the hospital. Christmas in over. the NICU. Yeah. Yes, we had so. <laughs> a Christmas dinner at the truck stop because it was in between uh, <laughs> visiting at the hospital. Yes. And so even though those were, those were some scary days, um, they were also really sweet days because um, even though we were over Christmas for that in the hospital, we were able to come home uh, shortly after. Um, but I, I think that when I think about Mary and not having all of that medical um, mm. help available um, and just doing that on her own. Um, in a stable. That's okay. all I think of, but that's okay. <laughs> Was is pretty uh, pretty amazing right. that she was she was able to take that on. Um, so it, I think um, it really it, watching your nephews it's sweet because mm -hmm. you really do see how having children um, really changes your perspective on uh, on Mary and Joseph's story um, and uh, the birth of Jesus. Yeah, I think too the whole responsibility. Of Joseph, I, I mean, as being a parent and what he must have gone through, and you know his flexibility. I think probably what Christmas teaches me a lot is just: yeah. are we flexible with what God has? That that everybody's plans got upended and changed. And I'm sure Joseph had a plan for his life. He had a plan of how he's going to provide for his family, what was going to happen, and. All the way along from Mary getting pregnant and then going to Bethlehem and having a baby there. And we presume they waited there for a bit and then having to be in exile in Egypt. I mean, none of that would be any person's plans. And yet God was there and Mary treasured all these mm -hmm. things. And, uh, you, you know, I think this year of any years, we've learned what it is to be flexible and hold our plans yeah. loosely you know, I think probably most of us um, in 2020 have, have learned that we can have plans, but really God God shapes them and forms them and uh, learning what it is to be flexible. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, I mean, it, the, we don't get a lot in the birth except, you know, they wrapped Jesus in swaddling clothes. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been thinking about that recently, what that swaddling was like. Yeah. And really, I mean, it talks very specifically that it's strips of cloth that, that they wrapped that baby in. But I think what's, um, I, there are a couple of things that come to mind when I think about that. Um, first of all, oftentimes it was, uh, they traveled, as they traveled, they traveled with cloth in case something happened along along the journey. And sometimes in, in that day and age, it, it was death. And so it was strips of cloth that, that could be used for that purpose. But the more important one, but that ties in really neatly with that, is the fact that that, uh, that cloth was also um, something that they would swaddle sheep in, lambs. And um, there was a tower just outside, like in the fields of Bethlehem. It was called Migdal Eater, and it literally means tower of the flock and the book of Micah talks about the tower of mm. the flock and how it's connected with the birth of Jesus. Um, what uh, th the part that when, when the shepherds were told by the angels that you are going to find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, uh, and this will be a sign to you. That is so very particular. And, and I always and wonder, wondered, how did they know where to go, exactly. right? Like, did they go knocking on every, you know, did they know it was, it didn't say it was in an inn or, you, you know, it could have been a lean-to, it could have been a cave or, yes. or it's possible swaddling clothes may have 
cause them to go. Yes, right to their own area. Um, because they actually watched that there was flocks around that, that watchtower, that tower of, of the flock, and uh, that were specifically used, those fields were specifically used um, to raise sheep that, and lambs that would be sent to Jerusalem a number of miles away to be used in the temple as uh, a sacrificial lamb for forgiveness of sins. And, and so these shepherds would have been very, would have known specifically what that symbol meant that the angels gave them, because that's what those shepherds were doing. As soon as they could see uh, um, a mom sheep that, that was about to deliver, they would, they would bring it to the tower and they would help with the delivery and clean it up and wrap it in swaddling clothes and lay it in a manger. And so they knew that those lambs were special, that they were set aside, set apart, and, and, and that they were meant to be sacrificial lambs. So here we have the, the mother of the, the, of the Son of God wrapping her son in swaddling clothes and lying them in a manger because that's all there was. And yet it was this beautiful symbol, heartbreaking in a way too. Because it's like, it's like the uh, funeral clothes. Yeah, it's very similar, right? That Jesus begins his life wrapped yeah. in strips of cloth and ends his earthly life really before he's resurrected in strips of cloth, but he bursts forth from them. Yes. Yeah. And yet such joy is associated with, with those swaddling clothes and, and, and that, and that baby Jesus that is going to be, become the king and, and, and in the process take away the sins and our sins. Um, and so what a, what a picture of hope that is for us. And I think there's, <laughs> there's ever a time we need hope. It's right now, you know, people yes. are looking for that, that these shepherds saw there's a future, you know, there's mm -hmm. someone who's going to deal with situation. It's not going to be the same bloody sacrifice again and yes. again. And, and that again. God has good plans for us. Right. So what would you encourage moms? What would you about Christmas? I always think, don't sweat it. Yeah. I mean, I think we all look for the perfect Christmas and we all want the ideal. And I think I look back, I think our kids look back. There's certain, it's sometimes the goofiest traditions that are the most meaningful, <laughs> right? That people yeah. really want and they really eagerly, we, we, we grew up in, in my home and really kind of almost when we became teenagers and then it was kind of um, some of the next generation kids but my mom it was always a birthday cake to Jesus and singing happy birthday to Jesus and uh you know whenever we're together even still as a family and you know we do that if we're there for Christmas and don't get stuck in places in COVID but we're we're there and that somehow just for my family is a real meaningful thing there's this goofy game with a ring on a string and I won't even explain it <laughs> but even now my kids even now who only played it probably a few times uh, still want to do that. So setting traditions that, that really are fun and meaningful and point to things are good. I don't know if traditions are things that stick with you. Yeah. Well, and I, and I do think those family get togethers, you know, my mom always wanted to have the perfect, the per, be the perfect hostess and have it all laid out. And, and she always did a, a beautiful job, but, um, it was, it was always, I had that feel of chaos and yet we thrived on it. We loved it as kids. It was, it, it was, it was exciting to be able to know that we were going to have company and, and, and friends and cousins that we're going to be able to play with. Um, and so I know that's a little different this time of year, but there's still, there's still a rhythm where you kind of, you, you're trying to have something that is so perfect and kids are going to enjoy it regardless. Yeah. One of the things, I, when I was really young, our church never had uh, Christmas Eve services. So that was unheard of, really, until I was a teenager. I'm that old. And, uh, but my family, we all, we all took lessons of some sort and readings. And we did our own just little kind of Christmas concert, so to speak. One of us would play the piano, another read a scripture. My brother would play the guitar. You know, we do several different things. My sisters maybe sing, and we'd have 10 or 15 minutes that we created just kind of our yeah. own. 
Christmas moment. And that was like every year. And we mm-hmm. began to look forward to it and plan and prepare. What are we going to play? And what are we going to do? And it was just us yeah. and nothing different. We did that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now people go to church and light a candle. But <laughs> but maybe with COVID, you know, there's opportunities just to invite them in. And what I remember is I was really participating yes. in, in Christmas. And I was doing something, not just observing, but I was participating. So we... Thank you for your commitment to just grow and learn and support moms and families. And it's our prayer for you uh, that God would really give you a wonderful Christmas. Do you want to just pray for the moms? Absolutely. Father, we come before you and we thank you so much that you value moms. And just like you came to Mary and said, I've got a really big job for you. And it's going to be a hard Mm -hmm. job, but it is a special job. And he comes to each of us and he says, I've got this great job for you and it's going to be hard, but it is so valuable. And so Lord, we want to pray um, protection over our families uh, this year in particular. We want uh, to be able just to have that peaceful, Um, and even though it may feel a little chaotic, there is a a deep love that runs through it. Father, would you, uh, help each mom to know that everything that they do, every, uh, every step of the way, they are leading their children, um, in a, in a fresh and a brand new way to see you. Um, and so Lord, we pray for those, those, uh, precious moments where you get to just, uh, where they get to just speak into their kids' lives um, through a storybook, through a Bible reading, through an Advent calendar. And Lord, we pray that um, these young lives would be touched because their moms are Mm -hmm. so valuable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Merry Christmas.